Good morning, good morning, good merry stupid o'clock in the morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC, but before we do the usual disclaimers, Folks, I just woke up about like 30 minutes ago. I have not had coffee. I have not had my black tea for the morning yet. So I apologize in advance for any babbling or missteps when I'm trying to string together a coherent sentence. All right, I'm getting it done this early because I want a pool day before I stream. All right, folks. Thankfully, I've not looked at Twitter yet this morning. I figured now would probably be a good time before I saw any stupid. In the description box, you're going to find the link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroplastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read that article so much. They have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Well, folks, Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. Also included in there is Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the JRC actually sees through with their threat. Also included in there, the Ozarks first article in regards to Agape Boarding School, now known as Stone for Help Boarding School situation, a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called troubled male teens, that has in pending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it. Also, with that, have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor still on the premises with full access to the boys up on multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You have an attorney general too busy chasing after drag queens and trying and miserably failing to defund public libraries to actually do his job. And you got a governor off his nut. So for us few left here who are actually coherent and sane, send help. Read that article. Share it on all your social media. Also included in there, all the pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including the link to this analysis done by Dr. Freda in 1999, Autistic Coyo's massive archive on the subject, Jennifer Masamba's behavioral shoot of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, the templates and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you do got young children present, folks, please go ahead and use those headphones, all right? This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they're watching this, very obviously, parental supervision, very highly advised, all right? All right, where we left off last time, right? As you can see, we're getting towards the end, hence why I have this up, which I'm already kind of happy. Anything that starts out with smart-ass cripple, I, I know it's going to be good. So, let's move on here, shall we? Conclusions. Oh, this might have a few pages here. <laughs> This report concludes with two major considerations on which to reflect. First, it is critical that the aversive and painful behavioral program used with X be reevaluated considering the lack of attention to current standards of applied behavior analysis 
and special education technologies an overwhelming body of literature documenting alternative effective behavioral and educational strategies. Thank you. Just sitting there and saying that there is no data for any other kind of program is just... You literally can do a search on Google and find alternative programs that has to do, yes, Dr. Israel, with those with severe behavioral issues. All right. It is completely illogical that they are trying to boldface say that there has been no change in regards to the different treatment programs and in regards in particular to their effectiveness when you blindly hold on to literature from the 1970s and 80s. Okay, it's been over 30 years. You can't sit there and say no data. For the love of God, I was like circa 2008 swimming in data when it comes to other programs and going over the paperwork. I had to because I was one of the folks that was helped streamlining, well, streamlining, excuse me, not awake, a person-centered planning approach throughout the entirety of my state. Not only do I know that there's alternatives, I know that, yes, person-centered planning can work for those most severe. Because I've seen it in real time. I've seen the data. The fact that you just declare no data, I, I don't know if you're cynical, whether you're just plain sadistic and trying to bamboozle the public, or you're just that stupid. Maybe it's all of the above. Who knows, right? Who knows? Second, this observer must urge to response, those responsible for monitoring the strategies used at JRC to also consider the impact of this adversive behavioral program on the young professionals and professionals in training who are implementing the plan. Right? Right. Like, imagine you get a new job, right? All of a sudden, the part comes up in the curriculum where you have to use shock treatment on a human being. JRC has a higher turnover rate when it comes to employees than places like McDonald's or call centers. And having worked in both, that's special. If you are, if you are a professional setting. And you're beating McDonald's and call center work when it comes to turnover rate. You might want to sit down and have yourself a think. Moving on. This report reflects this consultant's professional judgment that the extraordinary means of behavior suppression and aversive strategies that are used with X are not appropriate or justified. It's never justified. For all you people in the back, but what else will work? Literally anything. Anything else would work. Getting a cat would work. Believe me, I would know. Mr. Mal back there. Doubles as a therapy cat. Do you know how many stupid people that cat saves on a genuine daily basis? Just say it. Because the stuff that brings out the not-so-fun side of my autistic diagnosis has to do with being overwhelmed by stupid people. Stupid, mean, willfully angry yeah, little bullies who maybe they weren't, I don't, uh, maybe they weren't loved as a child, I don't know. But he saves the world every day, folks. Every day. Thank the Brahma cat over there that Tiffany has not decided to, like, either street naked down the street screaming about logic or, you know, other things. Let's just say they're not good. These extraordinary measures are used in the absence of any serious attempts to use what is now considered to be the standard practice for effective behavioral support. 
Similarly, current standard special educational practices have not been implemented. Not even close, not even remotely. These people do not adhere to the IDEA. They can't even seem to make themselves actually adhere to the IEP of the students in question. They do not follow any of the current standard practices, any of them. And their so-called transition program is a bad joke. They do not look like even remotely close to some of the most primitive and rural transition programs out there. Part of my coverage, remember I covered 25% of my state, the majority were rural. There are better transition programs in those rural schools who barely get any money at all than there is at the JRC in an advanced and particularly rich state. Let that sink in for a moment. Let that sink in. Yeah. The lack of educative and constructive replacement behaviors prohibit X from learning the types of skills and behaviors that would allow her to participate in less restrictive settings. See, once again, all they're doing is punishing the behaviors. They're not providing alternatives. They are not providing reasonable accommodations. They're not providing assistive devices. They're not doing any of these things that are just at the most basic level of any treatment program. This is not going into the nuances that are going to be in each program that are catered to individuals. This is basic 101 here. And they're not doing any of it. Any of it. If this consultant's recommendation that an expert in special education of students with severe disabilities and problem behavior be contracted to work with the JRC to design an appropriate educational program that is in line with the intent and requirements of the IDEA and that reflects the current educational standards. Right? Right? This is what they got from an hour observation. Remember, you had Dr. Israel, but she only observed for an hour. Boy, what she saw in that hour. What she saw in that hour. Doctor, just because somebody was only there for an entire hour does not mean that what they saw is not reflective of what you do in that school. Because we also have reams a video surveillance footage to back it up. Gotta love receipts, right? Gotta love receipts. The use of punishment creates a negative reinforcement paragraph for the individual delivering the punishment. That is, using something as painful as shock to suppress behavior will have an immediate effect. Thus, the person who delivers the punishment is reinforced for using the punishment because the behavior has stopped, at least temporarily, the person who implemented the punishment is reinforced. This person is likely to use the procedure again. <sighs> I've said it a thousand times. Torture works for a time. Remove the threat and what happens? Well, more than likely, that behavior comes back because what is causing that behavior was never dealt with. Alternatives, reasonable accommodations, or God forbid, assistive devices were never provided. So therefore, not only is it coming back, it's coming back worse than it was previously. Because now you've got trauma on top of it that is fueling that anger and that aggressive behavior. The way to deal with these issues is deal with the root cause. Everybody knows that. Literally everyone knows that. I know we can't we can't have logic. That's crazy talk. Crazy talk. Further, the application of punishment procedures does not depend on a functional analysis of variables controlling the problem behavior. Car Reeve Makito and McLaughlin, 1996. Again, a full functional assessment is 
fundamental when coming up with a treatment program specifically catered to an individual. We're not talking about JRC's bastardized version of a functional assessment where all they do is look over the behaviors. We're talking a full-fledged functional analysis that literally covers everything. Not just the behaviors. Not even just all the areas where the individual may be weak in. But also where we are strong in. What can be built upon? Don't be afraid of the special interest and the hyper focus, folks, because, well, it can lead to a career. If you, you can literally take a special interest and use it as a means to build social skills as a means and incentive to kind of help in other areas where social skills and life skills may be lacking. It can help develop friends who have a mutual interest in sub subject and give us motivation to practice those social skills. It can lead to secondary education opportunities or job opportunities down the line. When things are done right, when you start with that full functional assessment, taking everything into consideration, there is a lot you can do with a treatment program that I can tell you zaps the aggression right out of you. You know what I mean? <sighs> Perhaps the reliance on punishment procedures masks the need for the type of functional assessment strategies identified in the IDEA, which are meant to ensure the positive behavior supports. It goes a lot further than that. Full functional assessment is the baseline. You got to get a good baseline before you come up with a treatment program because things that I just stated. You can use one thing, an area that is strengthened. If you build upon that, and if you use it as a means to help build in the areas where we're not so strong, you can literally change somebody's life. Literally change their life. Okay? It's really that simple. You can take something as simple as a what they call our special interest and use it in multiple avenues to not just help us with our behaviors, but to help us build a future. We're going to go ahead and close on that one, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, folks, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. I will see you all at stream. I will probably have wet curly hair, and I don't care. Bye.